Good evening to one and all present here. Dr. Vikram Chaudhary, Director of OPF, Honorable Speaker, Dr. Madhi Adarodi, and all the viewers to the sixth day of Pharmanist 21 conference organized by Operant Pharmacy Federation. I, Chavi Goyal, along with my colleague Chetan Mehta, are moderators for the today's session. Before starting the session, I hope that everybody is doing fine and staying at home and holding up with the hope in these desperate times. So starting up with the today's session, as we are behind a little, I would like to let all the participants know all about Pharmanist 21. The theme of the Pharmanist 21 is data science, computational tools, artificial intelligence, novel technologies, evaluation, and contribution in the pharmaceutical research. It is an international virtual conference that welcomes personnel from a plethora of industries such as pharmaceutical, regulatory, academia, research, and many others focused on the betterment of the healthcare system. This conference mainly focuses on various aspects such as innovations, current trends, modern discoveries, which will ultimately help in the development of the healthcare system. The main purpose of organizing an international conference is to provide a platform and accessibility to the emerging leaders and the youth of the society to make their future bright. Well, Pharmanist 21 includes knowledgeable webinars like this one by the leaders from industries and academia from all over the globe, along with the various competitions such as e-blog, quiz, e-poster, video making, extempore, and many more, enabling the participants to get various opportunities to learn, participate, and develop their skills. Not only this, the participants can also win the prizes worth rupees 10.5 lakhs. In addition to this, there is one more golden opportunity from this conference that the winner will get the benefit of international exchange program, which means the selected candidate will get the exposure of learning in international industry and academics with their respective work culture in different countries around the world. Also with this, the participant who haven't registered yet with Pharmanist 21, hurry up as we are closing the registration soon and please stay connected with the following us on all social media handles. Now I would like to take over my colleague Chetan Mehta and introduce today's speaker. You're on mute. So, so I think we are I think we are having some problem with Chetan's mic, so I will continue. So first of all, I request all the participants to type their questions or queries in the chat box and, and ma'am will answer your question after the webinar. So today we have with us Dr. Mahadia Dharodi. She has completed her PhD and Master's in Organic Chemistry from University of Mazandran, Baboistar, Iran, and Khaji Nazi Tusi University of Technology, Tehran, respectively. She, ha she also has postdoctoral research experience from Al Zahra University of Tehran, Iran. In addition to this, Ma'am worked as lab expert, research and development expert, and QA manager in various industries. Currently, Ma'am is working as a researcher in the Department of Medical Biotechnology and Nanotechnology in Mashhad University of Medical Sciences, Iran. Ma'am has various publications in national and international journals with good impact factor. Her research working area of interest includes biosensors, cancer treatment using drug delivery nanomaterials, synthesis of novel compounds in supramolecular chemistry, computational studies, and prepare and evaluation of rubber and its properties. With this brief introduction, I request Ma'am to continue with the session. Over to you, Ma'am. Okay, uh, sorry for delay. Uh, I'm here uh, to, uh, to start my presentation on the topic of magnetic based biosensors. Uh, we will talk about basic designs and applications. Here uh, uh, you can see the outline. Uh, of uh, the topic uh, which uh, we can talk. Uh, the first, uh, we will uh, um, talk about sensors and uh, define uh, the sensors uh, as a 
uh, equipment for uh, detection nanosensors, uh, different kinds of uh, nanosensors, biosensors, and uh, finally magnetic based biosensors. Uh, we will talk about uh, this uh, topic and uh, epipiliometric analysis uh, was done on uh, this uh, material and design of magnetic based biosensors and their application. Uh, the first uh, question is uh, what are sensors? Uh, in fact, they are devices that can detect and sense uh, certain signals, uh, which uh, the signal could be biomedical, optical, electronic, electrical, physical, or mechanical signals. Uh, generally, a sensor is a transducer that converts uh, a measurement as a quantity or parameter, uh, for example, temperature, pressure, electrical field, a magnetic field, position, acceleration, or chemical environment uh, into a signal that carries information. Uh, nanosensors, uh, they are tiny sensors in the size of few nanometer, about 10 to 100 nanometer, uh, which they can detect the presence of uh, nanomaterial or molecules in the size of uh, nano or even a smaller. <clears throat> you can see here uh, a new uh, biosensor which is based on uh, antigen. In recent years, uh, enormous search of work has been carried out uh, to develop new methods for deter uh, detection uh, a wide range of bio biomolecular targets. Uh, in life science application, medical diagnostic, and pharmaceutical discovery. Uh, generally, uh, any biological or chemical sensory points used to convey information in a human sense. Uh, we uh, face with uh, sensing in our body. For example, uh, we have uh, sensing. Uh, example in our finger uh, which can touch uh, every surface or materials and detect uh, the uh, materials of uh, this uh, surface. We have uh, a pressure sensor uh, in our fingers. Uh, also uh, we have uh, a smart uh, sensors in eyes uh, which could detect uh, uh, to the image uh, distinguish between color or uh, radar sensor and uh, another sensor uh, which uh, we can talk about them uh, are uh, our ears and uh, our nose. Uh, we can detect the uh, a door and uh, other smelling. Uh, approximately, sensors are designed uh, to could use for uh, detection of uh, any object persons or uh, motion detection in various industrial, uh, mobile, electronic, uh, and uh, other retail automation. Uh, here you can see uh, different kind of nanosensors, which are divided in several types, uh, include uh, optical nanosensors, biological nanosensor, chemical nanosensors, and physical nanosensors. Uh, something we uh, want to talk about is uh, biological nanosensor, uh, which uh, divided in uh, different types, for example, antibody-antigen interaction, DNA interaction, and enzymatic interaction. In fact, uh, biosensors are self-contained integrated device that is uh, capable of uh, providing a specific uh, qualitative or semi-quantitative analytical information using biological recognition elements, which is in direct spatial contact with uh, a transduction element. Biosensors are analytical device uh, for measurement of a specific analyte, uh, biological material, or a physiochemical transducer. In general, Nanomaterial and nanosensor used uh, because uh, they could uh, enhance the sensitivity and uh, increase the detection level to uh, pico, fento, ito, and evo uh, 
uh, to uh, zip to a scale, uh, which uh, could increase uh, the detection to uh, this scale. Uh, in fact, uh, this is uh, an ability which could uh, facilitate uh, in uh, early detection disease. Uh, uh, biomarkers uh, are molecules with a function including physiological or uh, pathological assay, uh, which could interact with a specific receptor, uh, which uh, fits onto uh, the surface of biosensor transducer. Uh, if we want to talk about the history of biosensor, we could say uh, the concept of biosensor was come up by uh, Professor uh, Leland Clark in uh, 1956 who was identified as the uh, father of the biosensor cult. Uh, he worked uh, and introduced uh, oxygen electrode for measure uh, the concentration of oxygen in any liquid in uh, 1962. And uh, in 1975, idea of utilizing bacteria as the biological element uh, was uh, performed, uh, which uh, this work was uh, the first commercial biosensor. And also, uh, uh, <coughs> first surface plasma resonance sensor uh, was introduced in 1985 and blue glucose uh, biosensor chip in uh, 1987, and uh, nanotechnology biosensor chip was introduced in uh, 2000. Uh, exactly, uh, a field uh, sensor is uh, an analytical device incorporating uh, a biological sensing element uh, or a biological, a biologically uh, derived sensing element, uh, which could be antibody, bacteria, DNA, uh, enzyme, and uh, could be a membrane receptor uh, with. Uh, uh, which uh, either intimately with or integrated with uh, physiochemical currency itself. The usual aim is to produce a, a digital electronic signal which is uh, proportional uh, to the concentration of a specific analyte or group of analytes. Uh, usually, uh, non wire sensors are contained to basic component connected uh, in series, chemical or molecular recognition, or a receptor uh, in, in, as, uh, as a, a chemical transducer. In the majority of chemical sensors, the receptor uh, interacts with the analyte molecule. Therefore, the physical properties are altered in such a way that a pending uh, transducer uh, gain an uh, extra signal. Uh, in some uh, chemoresistor with receptors, uh, the binding of biomolecule uh, with uh, not uh, electric charge uh, change the channel uh, conductance. Uh, the recognition based uh, on affinity between complementary structure uh, like uh, enzyme uh, substrate, antibody antigen, receptor, uh, hormone complex, and uh, mm, is, uh, could affect on the selectivity and specificity, uh, which uh, depends on biological recognition system connected to a, su a suitable transducer. Uh, biosensor is generally defined as an analytical uh, device which uh, convert a biological response into uh, a quantifiable and uh, processable signal. Uh, you can here see a schematically uh, typical biosensor, uh, which a bioreceptor uh, that uh, is specifically been to the analyst uh, interface uh, architect uh, a specific uh, biological events uh, occur and uh, therefore uh, given rise uh, to a signal pickup uh, through uh, transducer element. Therefore, uh, 
the uh, transducer signal is converted uh, to electronical signal uh, and uh, amplified uh, the signal by detector uh, circuit and uh, the appropriate reference and uh, finally it will send to uh, <coughs> computer software for data processing. Here uh, you can see we have two different mechanisms for uh, sensors and by sensors. Uh, one mechanism is direct uh, sensing, which uh, target uh, could be uh, to ligand uh, on the surface of uh, electrode and uh, provide uh, a signal and sending to transducer. Uh, but uh, we have another mechanism as the indirect uh, <coughs> mechanism, uh, which uh, uh, another reaction uh, was performed in the ambient, and the signal, uh, uh, the product uh, produces a signal and sent to transducer. Uh, elements for bisensor are uh, depicted here. And uh, it is shown that uh, our sample could be uh, cell culture, human sample, as a blood or in uh, food samples, environmental samples. Uh, transducer could be uh, bioreceptor and electrical uh, interface. Uh, bioreceptor is nucleic acid cells uh, enzymes, and uh, the electrical interface are uh, fed device nanowire array, uh, nanoparticles, and electrons. Uh, therefore, as I say, uh, the signal will produce and send to signal amplifier uh, for processing to signal processor and displaying the uh, result of uh, this process. Uh, we have four basic and fundamental biosensors which uh, the first one is nucleic acid biosensor, which are being uh, developed as alternative to conventional DNA microarray. Uh, the complementary relationship between, uh, between uh, basic uh, are used for DNA, uh, for uh, detection uh, sequence of uh, DNA, and uh, reaction occurs in the surface of uh, transducer. Uh, the second one is uh, antibody antigen, uh, which have a high specificity between uh, an antibody and uh, antigen, which can uh, be utilized uh, in this type of sensor technology. Uh, another one could be cells and virus, uh, which are microorganisms. Uh, more to say, Microorganisms such as uh, bacteria and fungi can be used uh, as a biosensor uh, specific molecules uh, or uh, the overall state of the surrounding environment. <coughs> Sorry, uh, enzymes uh, or enzyme-based uh, biosensors uh, are composed of uh, enzyme bioreceptors that use the catalytic activity and bending capability for specificity in biomedical nanostructure detection. Uh, nanoscience uh, is known as one of the most outstanding scientific developments in uh, 21st century and uh, is currently applied for the exploration and development of various scientific, ecological and technological industrial fields. Recently, uh, rapid development has been achieved in the biomedical respect of uh, nanostructure biomaterial. Nano, uh, nanoparticle based biosensors uh, in this way are included, uh, could be included, aquatic uh, wave biosensor, uh, uh, electrochemical biosensor, and magnetic biosensor. Equestic wave biosensors are defined as a con uh, conjugation of uh, antibody modified so, uh, which uh, bond themselves on the electrical surface, uh, which uh, has been complex with the particle of analytes. Uh, then, 
conjugated in a manner that antibody molecules are immobilized over the electrical surface. Uh, another one is the uh, electrochemical biosensor, uh, which uh, we have uh, used it uh, extensively in different form. Uh, as a carrier, uh, not a particle could be used for them. Uh, this biosensor has been actively demonstrated uh, for biomarker analysis in a variety of uh, oncogenic uh, applications uh, as an early cancer um, detection uh, and cancer treatment. And another one is magnetic biosensor. Uh, which uh, you can here uh, see the mechanism of uh, this uh, buoyancy process. At first, uh, functionalization of the electrical surface uh, by the functional group A, for example, and uh, the magnetic nanoparticle, which uh, functional group B is immobilized on uh, the surface of uh, magnetic particles uh, in the ambient. Uh, could be have interaction uh, with target protein, and therefore uh, others uh, could, could not have any interaction with magnetic nanoparticle, uh, and therefore uh, this magnetic nanoparticle, which uh, the uh, target sample uh, protein or antigen, uh, uh, could be attached on the surface of a uh, magnetic sensor, and the sensing process uh, will be. Generally, uh, uh, magnetic nanoparticles uh, uh, have extensively used uh, in different uh, aspects. They are extensively used as a catalyst and uh, generally uh, the first time uh, used as a uh, biocomposite, magnetic biocomposite uh, in 1985. As a, uh, as a catalyst for uh, reaction. And after that, uh, this material used uh, for different aspects uh, in uh, medicine, in uh, cancer therapy, in catalytic reactions, and so on. Uh, here you can see uh, usage of magnetic nanoparticle. Uh, they could be uh, a good catalyst for different reaction, uh, photocatalyst. Uh, they, they could be a good uh, photocatalyst uh, and uh, could be absorbent in, uh, in environment or environment, magnetic separation and diagnostic sensors, uh, drug delivery. Uh, in fact, uh, magnetic nanoparticles have different applications. Uh, other application as a hypertreatment uh, by the drug delivery, uh, uh, cancer therapy, and uh, use of magnetic uh, in MRI contrast, uh, contrast, uh, con contrast agents, uh, which uh, these are example of highly successful research and uh, chemical methods. Among various patients, or magnetic wave sensor has attracted more attention because of the remarkable advantage as a uh, uh, facial uh, synthesis and uh, uh, its economical uh, perspective and different kind of this. And uh, one of the most important is his separation. Uh, here uh, you can see the bibliometric uh, on this. Uh, topic which uh, uh, we have presented uh, as a uh, biosensor uh, based on magnetic nanoparticles. Uh, all the uh, research uh, in this topic are depicted here and the figure shows the relationship between uh, among uh, top countries, top authors and uh, top uh, author keywords. Uh, which as exhibited, um, the top uh, the top five countries in which this uh, documentation uh, was performed uh, are China, uh, United States, Sweden, Japan, Denmark, 
and among these uh, uh, among these uh, countries, uh, most uh, published papers in these countries, uh, twenty countries, we can see Iran, uh, India, uh, Turkey, uh, and uh, Korea as the uh, Asian uh, countries. Other in this topic, uh, we can uh, mention uh, Liu and uh, the top uh, keyboards are by sensor and magnetic nanoparticle. Uh, here uh, you could see all the keyboards of uh, author and top keyboards uh, which published in Scopus and Web of Science for collection. Uh, here it is displayed uh, to the correlation between uh, 100 uh, index keyboard and uh, also the network of keyboard uh, includes uh, five uh, clusters in uh, you can see different clusters in uh, different colors uh, one cl a cluster is green and uh, another is red uh, yellow blue and uh, purple uh, there are uh, five uh, clusters and uh, there are more than uh, 280 uh, nodes and 190 links between uh, these uh, keyboards. Also, the density of uh, keyboards uh, it is uh, exhibited here, uh, which uh, shows that uh, the density is concentrated on biosensors, uh, magnetic fields, uh, magnets, uh, and uh, antigen molecules uh, on this topic is concentrated. Uh, this graph uh, gives a complete picture of magnetic nanoparticle usage all around the world. Uh, this repartition uh, guided such uh, important data for scientists to discover the place uh, they should work and uh, build up some uh, cooperation. Uh, it is exhibited that uh, between uh, 50 countries, China, United States, uh, Finland, uh, Canada, uh, um, Iran, in, uh, India, Turkey as uh, uh, countries uh, which have the greatest number of published articles compared to other nations. Also, uh, here you can see annual uh, scientific production of uh, this uh, topic. It is demonstrated that uh, the published article between uh, 1988 uh, to uh, 2021, which shown that uh, the trend of publication grows uh, with an upward uh, curve, and uh, it is depicted that uh, during uh, this decade, uh, the maximum 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 number of publications uh, in each year was about 100, uh, which is acceptable for this topic. Uh, here you can see uh, the chemical synthesis and processing of uh, magnetic nanoparticles. Uh, there are variant uh, process uh, for. Uh, uh, preparing magnetic nanoparticle. Uh, uh, the first, uh, the first method is uh, co-precipitation, and uh, which is uh, mostly used in uh, different uh, uh, laboratory. Uh, another one is uh, thermal decomposition, uh, hydrothermal, and microemulsion. Uh, magnetic uh, sensing methods uh, have a different method for uh, working on. Uh, one section is magnet uh, magnetoresistive method, uh, which included in anisotope magnetoresistance, uh, giant uh, magnetoresistance, uh, tunneling magnetoresistance, and giant magneto uh, impedance and uh, non-MR method uh, or non magnetoresistive method. Uh, it includes uh, flux, uh, flux gauge sensor, half sensor, 
and a superconducting quantum interface device. Uh, as you can see here, a magnetic sensor working range uh, is included here and uh, it is depicted that uh, TMR sensors, GMR sensors, and uh, Hall effect sensors are, uh, are sensors which uh, work in an acceptable range and uh, have a, a new and they are the newest uh, one during these uh, years. Uh, uh, Anisotropic magnetoresistance are, uh, in fact, uh, a quantum mechanical ma magnetoresistance that uh, this effect observed uh, in the uh, same film uh, structure composed of alternating ferromagnetic and non-magnetic layers. Anisotropic uh, uh, occurs when electrons has to a single magnetic field, uh, the resistance change uh, with the uh, angle between uh, the current and magnetization duration. Another one is uh, GMR uh, or a giant magnetoresistance, which uh, occurs when a spin up down electrons uh, consist of uh, a three layer searcher with one metal film film layer. Uh, sandwich between uh, two magnetic, uh, two magnetic uh, uh, thin film layer, the resistance a scattering of electrons uh, in the three layer is influenced by the parallel or anti-parallel direction between the upper and lower magnetization of magnetic layers. Another one is uh, tunneling uh, magnetoresistance which uh, occur when the spin up down electron uh, tunnels through an insulator thin film sandwich between, uh, between uh, the lower and upper magnetization of magnetic layer. Uh, another one is uh, uh, giant magneto uh, impedance, uh, which uh, uh, this biosensor is a complex impedance uh, of uh, soft magnetic material uh, driving with alterna uh, alternating current uh, under uh, external DC magnetic field. GMI is caused uh, generally by the skin effect of high frequency which uh, drive current uh, in soft magnetic material uh, where uh, the magnetic permeability depends on the applied magnetic field. Here you can uh, see uh, uh, the detection magnetic field range uh, by Tesla, which uh, TMR and uh, GMR has, uh, has uh, have uh, an excess extensive range uh, working in Tesla. Uh, here you can see uh, the schematic uh, of magnetic resistance uh, sensors. Uh, this sensor uh, originates from the process of uh, magnetization reversal uh, during the generation of magnetic domains. Uh, work. Uh, it uh, leads to uh, discontinuing uh, in the uh, magnetic magnet resistance curve and uh, it could uh, be uh, under the biosensor uh, to generate a magnetic field by uh, this wire, a uh, conducting wire, uh, which can you see here, uh, in order to uh, normalize the uh, initial state in the uh, pre-magnetization of uh, this magnetic layer of a sensor, this uh, conductive wire was used. Uh, most of the time, it is revealed that interaction between uh, the spray field and magnetic uh, uh, moment, uh, magnetic moment of uh, this uh, material, uh, in a flat surface, uh, we have this uh, shape. But uh, we face uh, with some problems. Uh, biosensors are planar uh, 
in this site uh, have uh, some uh, demerit as uh, not sufficient uh, sensitivity to detect the alpha flame magnetic uh, stray field. Uh, for this reason, uh, to increase the sensitivity, a very uh, dimensional zigzag surface uh, introduced to modify sensing surfaces. A uh, zigzag structure uh, can uh, attract and fix uh, magnet uh, label cells and uh, 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 washing these cells away uh, through uh, washing by fluid. Uh, it allows uh, the sensor on the flat chip to detect a variation of the magnetic uh, in the field in the alpha plane. Uh, which uh, perform through microelectromechanical uh, system, uh, and uh, you can see uh, process for uh, MR sensor preparation of MR sensor. Here also uh, you can see uh, a schematic uh, of MR sensor, uh, which is based in antibody immobilization, uh, sandwich immobilization, surface modification, external uh, magnetic field, and magnetic particle uh, usage. Uh, here you can see uh, the non-magnetic uh, resistance bio uh, sensor, which uh, divided in uh, different three sections. Uh, flux case sensor, half sensor, and uh, superconducting quantum interface uh, device. Uh, but uh, one of the most important uh, non MR by uh, sensors are uh, half sensors. Uh, this uh, micro half uh, sensor could uh, respond to a localized uh, magnetic field, which uh, this magnetic field produced by a, a magnetic. Uh, with bias voltage and uh, a strong effect uh, due to uh, cap uh, capacitive uh, coupling uh, between tap uh, and sensor. Uh, Hall mag uh, uh, magnetometry uh, sensors uh, are versatile devices uh, exhibiting high magnetic moments. Uh, with uh, sensitivity, uh, with a high sensitivity uh, over a wide uh, <laughs> over a uh, wide field, and uh, also they can uh, uh, have an elevated signal to noise ratio, and uh, could work uh, in uh, room temperature condition. Moreover, it could provide a, a linear response. Uh, which uh, uh, being not affected by magnetic saturation. Uh, here uh, you can see different mechanisms for uh, preparation of uh, this uh, basic uh, magnetic ray sensor. Uh, at first, the uh, clustering uh, assay uh, could be used a sandwich assay. Direct uh, labeling and amplification uh, should be used for preparation. And uh, as we say uh, for the chemo sensor, we have uh, two different mechanisms for uh, sensing process. Uh, one uh, mechanism is indirect, uh, and another is direct. Here you can see the direct uh, mechanism of sensing, which uh, Magnetic label uh, functionalized uh, by a molecule uh, A is uh, immobilized on the magnetic nanoparticles, and uh, this uh, magnetic uh, nanoparticle immobilized magnetic uh, nanoparticle uh, could be uh, uh, interact and uh, into the surface of magnetic field sensor and uh, produce a signal and uh, send a signal to transducer. Uh, another one uh, you can see here uh, is uh, indirect which uh, MR sensor surface uh, coated with uh, a captured antibody uh, and uh, biological uh, sample uh, loaded onto sensor surface and uh, antigen of interest uh, 
uh, especially been to uh, capture antibodies. Uh, uh, in the following, uh, biotinylated uh, detection antibodies are added and uh, specifically been to antigen. And uh, the link uh, magnetic nanoparticles uh, added uh, and been to detection antibody uh, through biotin uh, SF, uh, SF thyridine uh, conjugation. Uh, generally, uh, we talk about um, MR biosensors and uh, non MR biosensors, but uh, extensively MR sensor uh, used uh, extensively. Among these GMR and TMR sensor have been successfully used in some application due to high sensitivity, scale size, and uh, also excellent complementary metal oxide uh, semiconductor compatibility. Uh, TMR uh, biosensor have higher sensitivity, higher stability, and lower power consumption in comparison with uh, GMR sensor. But uh, this sensor has some uh, demerits as uh, low linearity and uh, high uh, coercivity, uh, which may affect the performance of uh, sensors. Uh, generally, the sensitivity could be influenced by the distance between magnetic nanoparticle and the sensing layer of biosensor, which uh, for uh, enhance the performance. Uh, two methods uh, method, uh, generally used uh, in this uh, response. Uh, the first one is increase, uh, increase the amount of magnetic nanoparticle, and uh, another one is uh, high magnetization nanoparticle, uh, which can be easily magneti uh, magnetized by weak field. Here you can see uh, some examples of uh, magnetic uh, uh, biosensor, which are uh, mm, uh, this um, uh, magnetic biosensor was used for uh, immun was used as a uh, immune biosensor for interleukin six detection. Um, the basic for this biosensor is GMR, uh, GMR and uh, the detection antibody cycle with magnetic nanoparticle and applied uh, and been to the capture analysis. Another one uh, which we could mention uh, is glucose biosensors. Uh, glucose uh, oxidase immobilization on the magnetic composite nanofiber, uh, and uh, it could be applied in enzymatic uh, first and second generation biosensors. Uh, the advantages of this biosensor. Uh, was uh, the facial uh, method, low pass growth to sense uh, to a good uh, sensitive stable and uh, no interference uh, glucose biosensor. Another one uh, is uh, biosensing uh, of cholesterol and uh, cholesterol uh, palmitate, uh, which used uh, for uh, sensing of uh, cholesterol. Uh, it is uh, enzyme attachment uh, uh, and uh, electrochemical biosensor for uh, monitoring of cholesterol. Uh, one another example of uh, magnetic biosensors are HIV biosensor by magnetic nanoparticles, uh, which uh, biosensor platform is constructed. Uh, as a mix self assemble uh, monolayer uh, coated quartz breaker and to uh, HIV2 uh, immunodominance. Uh, it is uh, uh, as an antibody uh, which used by uh, based on electromagnetic piezoelectric acoustic biosensing platform. Uh, Another example which uh, is shown here is biosensor immunoassay for antibiotics. Uh, 
uh, it is a novel uh, chemo luminescent uh, optosensor for the high sensitivity detection of uh, color, uh, chlora, uh, chlorophenicol, and uh, this is uh, a cap uh, optomer functionalized uh, magnetic nanoparticle. Uh, this uh, biosensor has a good stability and good overall stability uh, in uh, chemical luminescence they are say uh, with good uh, separation. Another uh, example uh, and uh, the final example uh, uh, is uh, after sensor for um, insulin antibiotic detection uh, which is a, a sensitive fluorescence uh, after sensor uh, which uh, is based on uh, modification of magnetic nanoparticles by uh, uh, IU nanoparticle and uh, constructed fluorescence of the sensor with competitive performance. Uh, here you can see uh, some different application of magnetic nanoparticles. They could be used uh, as a sensor for, uh, for food analysis, a study of biomolecules, uh, and the interaction, drug development, crime detection, medical diagnosis, environmental field uh, monitoring, quality control, and manufacturing, uh, pharmaceutical, and uh, replacement uh, of organs. Uh, and uh, we have usage of it in uh, <coughs> different parts. Uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, my Presentation is uh, thank you, ma'am, for your uh, such a valuable and uh, knowledgeable talk on magnetic based biosensors and their applications in healthcare system. Uh, I request all the participants to type their questions or queries in the chat box, and answers for the same will be discussed. Now we will proceed for the question and answer session. Uh, first question is the what is the exact concept on automobile automobile wheel clearance estimation using magnetism? Sorry, I can't hear you clearly. Uh, yes, ma'am. I will repeat the question, ma'am. What is the exact concept on automobile wheel clearance estimation using magnetism? The on the screen, Sorry, so you I can check the screen. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you clearly. Your voice uh, has an echo. I couldn't hear. Uh, doctor, the tuition on the screen, so you can uh, like read the tuition through screen if you are not getting voice properly. Can oh, I just read the question? I'll repeat the question for you. If my voice is audible to you. Uh, I can't hear uh, clearly. Uh, I don't know. Your your voice are echo. Okay. Ma'am, if you can see the question, it's right there on the screen. Uh-huh. Um, yeah.
how can uh, biosensor helpful in healthcare monitoring uh, in this COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, in fact, uh, as I saw uh, in uh, our uh, institute, uh, some researchers working on uh, biosensor for uh, monitoring of uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, they used uh, the salvia uh, sample for this uh, purpose uh, and uh, therefore uh, they can uh, detect uh, uh, through uh, different methods. Uh, they can uh, work on uh, volatile uh, uh, materials in salvia for detection. Uh, yes, I, I think uh, there are some biosensor for detection virus available for commercial. Uh, for example, uh, one example was uh, about HIV, uh, which uh, used this uh, biosensor for detection. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, biosensor could be used uh, in uh, uh, detection and also for uh, um, uh, after that, they could be used, um, non-material uh, could be used for uh, drug delivery and cancer therapy. Uh, the next question is, can biosensors for, be used for detecting virus available for commercial use? Uh, yes, I answered this question. Uh, yes, uh, there are uh, uh, some uh, biosensor for detection of uh, virus, uh, HIV, uh, I, uh, something which I saw, uh, one of them was uh, for HIV. The next question is, which protein will bind the pesticide for a biosensor? What is the best approach for this? Mm, what? Will bind a pesticide for a biosensor. What is the best approach for this? Like best uh, technology. Mm -hmm. uh, for pesticide, you should uh, at first uh, know uh, which interaction you mean, uh, and uh, you know. At first, you should uh, define the guideline for working, and uh, after that, uh, you, you know, for example, you have uh, a pesticide uh, based in phosphorus compound, and you should uh, design uh, a biosensor based on uh, interaction with this uh, material. Or if you have uh, sulfate compounds, uh, you should uh, design uh, your uh, uh, by sensor based on uh, it. The next question is Can biosensor could quickly analyze the result of the measure? Uh, yes, it, you know, uh, it depends on uh, the computer uh, method which you, which you use. Uh, for example, uh, for uh, analytical, most of these methods are quick and uh, you can uh, get your response uh, quickly. For this reason, uh, these days, uh, all the science uh, in uh, biological uh, go in this way. Uh, and uh, it is uh, uh, one of the uh, most important uh, parts of uh, biosensor designing. Uh, for example, uh, sometimes use uh, fluorescence uh, or luminescence UV visible uh, and uh, different kind of method could be used up, up uh, ampermetric, potentiometric. Uh, these methods are uh, quick, but um, maybe analyzing data uh, ha uh, needs uh, some time to uh, analyze it. The next question is. Uh, can highlight role of digitization in biocomputers and biosensor? Uh, 
What you said? I think he's asking that if you can highlight the role of biocomputers and biosensors in today's world, like the world is uh, today is very digitalized. All we do is uh, work on computers day and night. I think that's uh, what the participant wants to say. Uh, uh, I can highlight roll up uh, digitalization. Um, yes, of course, uh, it will be used uh, very strongly. Uh, because uh, in different uh, aspects we need uh, to uh, have a quick response but uh, sometimes uh, these methods uh, could have some errors and uh, for this reason maybe uh, in some uh, aspects uh, it will not be uh, accessible or acceptable. Uh, Ma'am, next question is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the biosensors in case of drug delivery? If you can just brief some points of advantages and disadvantages. Uh, in fact, uh, biosensors uh, generally uh, have uh, advan more advantages, uh, which uh, most of uh, uh, the science uh, go in this way and uh, uh, you, you know uh, the quick response uh, and uh, also uh, high sensitivity selectivity uh, and especially for magnetic nanoparticles uh, the separation of magnetic nanowire sensor uh, there are many uh, advantages of this material uh, which could mention but uh, maybe uh, the effect of uh, instrument which we use, maybe uh, effect on the result. Uh, we could have some uh, errors uh, based on uh, uh, technical uh, instruments. So, uh, next question is, ma'am, what different materials we can use for designing of the biosensors? Uh, generally, uh, materials which used uh, in uh, this purpose are biocompatible. Uh, for example, uh, um, polymers uh, as a uh, uh, cyclodextrin, as a heterosone, uh, the biocompatible uh, biopolymer are used generally for biosensor uh, designing because uh, in, in, in their uh, errors or uh, the uh, danger of uh, some materials is not acceptable for this using. Okay. So um, next question is from me, ma'am. Actually, it is uh, following your last slide. Uh, there was some biosensor mentioned that were uh, non-invasive to the body, but there are also uh, nanoparticles, but they also cause some invasion in the body. So, uh, like, how safe are the biosensors? I mean, are there any uh, harmful effects to the body in the longer run, if not in the shorter run, like EEG or an ECG? Uh, you mean about other particles? Uh, no, Mama, asking about biosensors, I was just giving an example of nanoparticles. Uh, nanoparticles, uh, I, uh, I suppose, uh, you know, uh, these days uh, we have different materials which uh, could have uh, detrimental effects on our body. And uh, maybe, maybe uh, nanoparticles uh, could not be exceptional uh, for this matter. But uh, in generally, uh, we use a material which uh, could be uh, uh, which uh, are compatible with our body and uh, generally are not harmful to our body. <coughs> uh, we try to use uh, this kind of material. Uh, for example, we don't use uh, as uh, non-particle based on 
uh, PV or uh, mercury. We don't use this kind of material, but uh, maybe maybe uh, we can uh, say something uh, with uh, uh, certain uh, with uh, one hundred percent sure. Uh, another question is there any option to use this biosensor for antimicrobial resistance uh, yes uh, i uh, one of the uh, example which uh, i uh, import uh, in this part was uh, based on uh, I, I think it was based on uh, bacteria mm, no I, I think it was not let me uh, Bacteria, no, it was antibiotic. No, uh, but yes, there are uh, some works based on uh, bacteria, based on uh, fungi uh, and uh, virus. Uh, there are different works uh, on this part. Uh, just uh, I have some example uh, in uh, in this topic. Also, Ami already highlighted some daily life activities used, uh, but are there any further suggestions that you can provide us? Uh, one uh, clear example of um, uh, biosensors, uh, we can uh, take an example, uh, the glucose monitoring, uh, the devices which uh, mostly used uh, in every home and is used for uh, uh, measuring the glucose in the blue. I guess we have answered all the questions of the participants presented here. Are there any? Okay. So thank, you. so thank you everybody for joining. Thank you so much, ma'am, for such a knowledgeable and valuable session. And I would like to inform all other participants to register for the Farmanist before the registration dates are over. And thank you, everybody, for joining, especially ma'am, to take out the time for us in joining with us uh, and Vikram sir. So we thank can you. conclude this. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And we really hope that everybody is safe at home. And that's it. Uh, Chetan, do you want to say anything to conclude the session? Okay. Uh, sir, do you want to conclude the session? Uh, conclude the session? session? Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the valuable your answers and. Uh, uh, sir, do you want to conclude the session? Uh, thank you, Dr. Darudi, for your valuable and knowledgeable sessions to our target audience. And thank you for accepting our invitations and uh, giving a talk on uh, emerging topic biosensors, magnetic biosensors. And, uh, so we do announce for the feedback. Oh, yes. So we will provide feedback link in tomorrow's session. And uh, we will hope to see you, every participant there. And your feedback is very valuable to us. And uh, that's it from my side. Thank you, everybody, for joining.